Next, let us move on to ascertainment of profit under single entry. Profit under single entry may be ascertained under two methods. One is the statement of affairs method or the net worth method and two is conversion of single entry into double entry. <clears throat> now, statement of affairs. <clears throat> so what is a statement of affairs? A statement of affairs is a list of assets and liability. So that is really similar to a balance sheet. What is a balance sheet after all? It's a statement of assets and balance sheet. So this is like a balance sheet like a balance sheet similar to a balance sheet only we call it a statement of affairs because we are not very sure about the value of the figures some of them some of the accounts some of the values that we have put to the assets could be just estimates so we call it a list of assets and liabilities we call it a statement of affairs and not a balance sheet <clears throat> Once we list the assets and the liabilities, assets minus liabilities is nothing but the capital. Assets minus liabilities is the balancing figure. Assets minus liabilities is the capital and the balancing figure. It may not be entirely accurate. <clears throat> now let us just consider an example. Suppose I were to start a business by bringing in cash of rupees 10,000. <clears> start a business by bringing in cash of rupees 10,000. So what happens at the beginning if somebody asks me, my cash, my asset is 10,000. Therefore, capital is also 10,000. The balancing figure, the only asset I have is 10,000. It belongs to me. That is the net worth of the business at that moment on the first day of the business. And the capital is 10,000. So cash is 10,000, capital is 10,000 at the beginning of the year. <clears throat> what happens at the end of the year? <clears throat> Suppose, let me, let us say, what are the transactions that I had with this cash during the year? <clears throat> let us say, we have, I have purchased, okay, I have purchased for cash goods worth rupees 10,000. I also purchased some more, but on credit, another 10,000. I also sold goods. Let us say I made sales for cash of 20,000. And I sold on credit, let us say, for another 10,000. Let us just assume that this is all the transactions that I have had in the whole year. What happens then at the end of the year? At the end of the year, what is my cash balance? What is the amount of cash that I have? Just look at my assets and I look at my liabilities. So what is my cash that I have? I had started with 10,000. Then I purchased, so money went out 10,000. Credit is for 10, so there is no outflow of money. Then I sold goods for 20,000 and therefore received another 20,000. This therefore gives me 20,000 is my balance of cash, right? Next, what is my other asset? Another asset that I have is the money that is receivable because I sold in credit. Therefore, I have debtors worth 10,000. So, another asset that I have is debtors amounting to 10,000. So what is my total asset I have is 30,000. On the other side, I owe money to somebody, creditors, because I purchased here on credit, that is, I have creditors of 10,000. If I deduct this, what I get is 20,000. This must be my capital at, at end of the year, at end of the year. If that, what does this mean? It means that I started with a capital of 10,000 at the beginning of the year and end of the year, I it has grown to 20,000. So 10,000 has become 20,000. Therefore, my profit is actually 10,000. That is 20,000 closing capital minus I began with 10,000. This 10,000 is my profit. Logically, is that correct? Let us just check. What is my total purchases? 20,000. What is my sales? 30,000. 
sales minus purchases 30 minus 20 is 10,000 and therefore my profit is 10,000 as can be logically conclude from the system from the double entry system that we have done before we know that our profit had we prepared a trading account we would know that our profit is 10,000 we have not taken any other transactions just in a very simple way to help you understand that when my capital grows if I start with 10,000 end of the year I have 20,000 it means I have made a profit of 10,000 during the year. This in very simple terms is the statement of affairs method which we are going to discuss. Let us first see how to prepare a statement of affairs. <clears throat> prepare a statement of affairs from the following particulars. Cash balance of 15,000, bank 75,000, investments of 1 lakh, furniture 40,000, stock 15,000, salaries due 10,000, creditors 15,000. So what are my assets here? Cash is my asset, bank balance is an asset, investments are asset, furniture is an asset, stock is an asset. Salary is due, salary is due, is salary is payable. Therefore, this is my liability, creditors is my liability. How do we prepare a statement of affairs? We make a heading, say a statement of affairs. And a statement of affairs, just like a balance sheet, is relevant on a particular date. I did not mention the date here, but it should be on a particular date. This is a statement of affairs. Let us say on one side, we write the liabilities. And on the other side, we write the assets. <clears throat> what are the liabilities I have? The salaries outstanding, salaries due. How much is that? That's 10,000. Creditors is 15,000. What are my assets? My assets are cash balance of 15,000, bank balance of 75,000, investments of 1 lakh, <clears throat> stock of 15,000. Stock of 15,000 and furniture of 40,000. If I make a total now, what do I get? <coughs> Two lakh forty five thousand is the asset. If I were to take balance both sides, the balancing figure two lakh forty five less twenty five thousand, I would get a balancing figure of two lakh twenty thousand. Balancing figure of two lakh twenty thousand. <coughs> This is how we would prepare a statement of affairs, list of assets and liabilities, balancing figure, capital. 